This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. You know, I've done this for five seasons, four off seasons to be more specific, right? I came in in the middle of the 2018 season with this YouTube channel. And I have seen off seasons that were full of excitement, like the 2019 off season. I don't think we were more excited for a football team than that. Um, 2019 was full of excitement. The 2021 off season was full of excitement. And then you get off seasons like the 2021 or the 2022 off seasons, which are full of debate and kind of pessimism. And then you have an off season like this. And I don't think this off season, the tone of it has been overly optimistic like 2019 or 2021. I don't think the tone of this off season has been overly pessimistic like 2020. I think a lot of people were pessimistic about 2020. I think the tone of this off season has been very anxious. I think that is the number one feeling that Browns fans have right now is that they're anxious. They're, they're not nervous in the sense of, I don't know if this team's going to be able to hold up, but nervous in the sense of that there is no excuse for this team not being able to achieve what you want them to achieve, or at least somewhere close to that. It's just a question of how far they can go. And what I think this anxiousness stems from is something that's very natural, right? And we go through this in our personal lives. We go through this in our fan lives or whatever life you want to relate it to. This is a universal thing that happens in pretty much any uh, reference of existence. When you get close to a goal you've wanted to achieve a long time, a lot of people think the natural reaction is to focus, to lock in, and to grab that goal. And look, for a lot of people, that's what they do. But also for a lot of people, being close to a goal that you've wanted the team or you yourself or somebody else to achieve has a different reaction. And it's usually a nervous reaction once you realize that you're close, right? You ever play a video game that you've been trying to beat and you've been on level eight this whole time and it's got like 11 levels and you finally get to that last level and then it hits you that you are at the last level and if you lose, you gotta go back to level one. That's what we feel right now. We feel that anxiousness and it's not a bad thing. This is what you want to feel as a fan because that anxiousness is something that tells you that you have a team that could achieve a lot this year. Doesn't guarantee that they will, but you have a team that has the chance to achieve a lot. And with this anxiousness, I think it gets focused on the quarterback position for good reason. You look at this defense and there's really not that much to feel anxious about. Like, yeah, will they return to form? Will they be just as good as they were in 2023? We can all worry that, but we know that the base of that defense is probably going to be pretty good because everybody is back for the most part outside of like Taki Taki. Everybody is back. You look at the offense outside of the quarterback position and you feel pretty strong about it. The biggest question you have on the offensive line is what are you going to do with three starting offensive tackles? Not necessarily the worst problem to have. Um, the biggest question you have at running back is, hey, will your all pro running back be back in time? Not the worst question to have. Um, and like the biggest question you have at, at, at receiving is, hey, will you be able to fit Jerry Judy in when you already got to give targets to David Njoku and Omari Cooper? Again, not the worst problems to have. You don't really have that much to be anxious. You do have a new offense, but that kind of all surrounds the quarterback position, right? Everything that I think Browns fans are anxious about and why Deshaun Watson continues to dominate the conversation of the offseason is because everything that Browns fans are anxious about, everything the Browns fans fear 
could stop them from reaching the goals that they hope to reach. And they know that this team has the unique opportunity to reach given what how this roster looks. Kind of lays in that quarterback adjacent area. You have a new offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey. It's in that quarterback. Ken Dorsey's not just in here for the offense, right? He's going to do more than just the quarterback um, position, but Ken Dorsey kind of hovers around that quarterback position. A lot of the talk about why the Browns brought in Ken Dorsey directly related to Deshaun Watson. Then you think about a new offense. You think about, hey, will you be able to learn a new offense? And then you start thinking about the injury, right? Deshaun Watson has a Shoulder injury that he missed the entire season. Well, not the entire season, most of the season for half the season for, um, and it's on his throwing shoulder. And when you hear throwing shoulder surgery, you get nervous, especially when it's quarterback, but it's a bone injury. We know that bone injuries are less complicated to heal at least than like an ACL or a, a ligament tear here, right? You're not talking about having to reconstruct the shoulder ligament or or get a, a, a another muscle off of a cadaver or something like that, and then re. And so it, you're not at, you're not talking about doing any of that. You're just talking about bringing in or at least giving an injury time to heal after surgery. And I think a lot of people are nervous about that, and that nervousness is manifesting itself into some sillier theories that I, I've read. Um, the Browns signed a fifth quarterback at the rookie mini camps. And I was shocked that one people went with this angle and two that this angle got any level of actual traction. But the angle basically was that the Browns signed this rookie quarterback out of rookie mini camps. And the angle was, that this is because the Browns are not confident in Deshaun Watson's injury timeline. And to me, making that conclusion from that signing that quickly reeks of a lot of people being very unsound about how they feel about this team. And I think, you know, it, it's, it's good to have a bit of information inserted here. We feel all kinds of ways about the Cleveland Browns. We're anxious about this. And we know that a lot of our anxiousness kind of hovers around the biggest unknown um, on the roster, which is Deshaun Watson. And one of the unknowns about Deshaun Watson is, will he be healthy this year? And can he stay healthy this year? Well, on the front of him being healthy for this year, for those of you who thought that the Browns bringing in an extra quarterback was a sign of Deshaun Watson's lack of health, for those of you who thought that the, that there might be a setback in the Deshaun Watson injury front, which, again, I want to be fair on this. These people also went through the injury saga that was Deshaun Watson through week four to ten. Um, and I think a lot of people just don't have a lot of trust in what the Browns put out there because of that. Right. And even though the Browns have come out and said everything's going fine, even though Deshaun Watson has come out and said everything is going fine. These are things we heard before that turned out not to be true. But while I can understand the lack of trust, I don't think it's necessarily too warranted here because we've had more information about this injury than we did about the injuries during the season. And it really does seem like and it really does seem like. He's on a good path to recovery. This is a report from Mary Kay Cabot, um, who, look, people feel how they feel about Mary Kay, um, but Mary Kay is still usually right about things of this nature when she reports them. Um, Mary Kay says, Watson is throwing with his normal velocity and range coming off a fractured socket and partially torn labrum. And everyone is optimistic about his on schedule recovery. The encouraging thing for the Browns and for Watson is that he feels great and the ball is coming out. Well, the bottom line is that he's still on 100 percent on track to start the season September 8th against the Cowboys. There it is. That 
on top of things Watson has said himself, on top of things that the team is saying, on top of the things that we know that he is actually throwing at full velocity, that he's th- not feeling like he's really encumbered, tells me that they feel like the injury is pretty much recovered. It's just more about being careful and and doing maintenance on the injury. And I think a similar thing is going to happen with Nick Chubb where we're going to find out maybe in like late August to early September that Nick Chubb is ready to come back to practice but I wouldn't expect the first day that he practiced to coincide with like a week that he plays I think they'll give him a week or two um, to kind of get comfortable practicing before he plays now obviously for Nick Chubb that happens in late August that means that he could be ready for week one or could be ready for limited snaps in week one or you know it could all be all the way to like week four of the season but I think a similar kind of thing is going to happen there where they're going to see that he's healthy he's going to get clear for practice they'll let him uh practice limited and everything and Deshaun Watson look it's May and we're talking about him throwing at normal velocity in range he's healthy Deshaun Watson is healthy um and he's likely going to be healthy at the very least by the time you get to all uh to get to training camp so Browns are at a good spot. Deshaun Watson's recovery seems to be at a good spot. Um, And hopefully we can move on from talking about is the shoulder recovered and start talking about how he looks in the new offense and if he's going to be able to be a factor in the fourth quarter on a consistent basis enough for the Browns to be a championship contender because that's really what this comes down to with Deshaun Watson. A lot of focus is going to be on cumulative numbers, but the real focus for me and I think Browns fans is, hey, can he be a difference maker in the fourth quarter? You know, when you're going up against a Lamar Jackson, a Joe Burrow, a Patrick Mahomes, can he make that difference in the fourth quarter? We've seen him do it against Patrick. I mean, not Patrick Mahomes. We've seen him do it in a Cleveland Browns uniform versus Joe Burrow. We've seen him do it in a Cleveland Browns uniform versus Lamar Jackson. We'll see if he could do that in a Cleveland Browns uniform versus Patrick Mahomes. But that's what we want to start to get to focus on with Deshaun Watson. Um, can he stay healthy? Hopefully that's not something we have to worry about all season. Like the less we worry about Deshaun Watson's health and the more we can start talking about what he needs to do on the field in order for the Browns to reach where they need to reach, then we're going to be in a better place. And it looks like we're taking steps towards that. So yes, I know we're all anxious. I know we're all nervous. I know we're all looking for that one thing that can torpedo the season because we're so nervous and we see how good this team could be. And some of us don't even want to believe in it because again, you know, it's, it's a natural feeling to be so close to achieving something, but not knowing if you can achieve that thing a hundred percent and maybe the fear of failure is something that's driving you to never even try, right? And there, people are looking at, well, we're not even going to have a chance to capitalize on all this because he's not going to be healthy, right? Like, I think that's what people are looking at to torpedo the season uh, or torpedo their expectations or their hopes. And it's an interesting place right now. This is a unique offseason, unlike any offseason that I've been a part of as a fan or as somebody who covers the team. So let me know what you think in the, in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have an even better night. Peace.